you are not going to want to miss today's video. On today's episode, we are going to be doing three total trash to treasure makeovers. And I mean like seriously trash. I got them for free. They were literally going to go in the trash. Stuff found on the curb, found for free on Facebook Marketplace. And something that we've made out of scraps. Literally trash to treasure. And you won't even recognize this one when it's done. But this table right here we got for free off of Facebook Marketplace. And I'm actually going to fix it up using some scrap that I had from previous projects. And use it as a display in my booth where I resell my items. And then the very last thing is something you guys have been asking me for. You've seen it in some of my videos. This is how we make our DIY little china holder plate holder <laughs> beadboard I don't even know what you would call this but you've been asking so we're gonna show you how we made it I like to start with the biggest piece first so we're gonna start with this hutch this came off of somebody's front porch and it was pretty damaged and gross super dirty and I have been calling it the Franken hutch because it does not make sense how it was made. So some of the things that are on here were original and it seems that some of them are something taken from a different piece of furniture and put on there. And like you can see somebody did the DIY special here, which is fine. I understand if you don't have what you need to do it the correct way, then you got to do what you got to do. But these doors, I don't think are original to the piece. I think they come from something else and you can tell because there's like a whole different color wood in there. I don't I really don't even know what is going on here because it's really supposed to be a mahogany piece, but yet there's random areas of it that were colored completely different, made of different wood. And then the glass doors on it seem so weird. So the original hinges are gone. They use some kind of weird gel stain inside to make it a more brown color instead of red. But the hinges are now on the outside of the piece. I don't understand what is going on here with this piece. Why they would replace the hinges unless these are not the original doors. But what are the chances that there was non-original doors that fit this exact cabinet? I don't know. I'm just so weirded out by how this piece was made. None of it makes any sense. But I do know one thing is for sure, I'm removing all the doors off of this. So since it has these weird Frankenstein type builds put onto it, I think it would be a really good candidate for one, paint, and two, for taking all the doors off and having it be open shelving. I feel like lately I've been doing renovations on pieces of furniture, kind of like how people have been doing renovations on houses where they want to do open concept. So I'm doing open concept on a lot of my hutches that we have been making over. So my husband had to step in and take off the hinges because the metal that the flathead screws were made out of was just stripping and it wouldn't let me take the screw out so he had to come in he has really strong hands so he came in and pulled that out for me and he's also going to pull out all the little door stopper pieces that were in here and he has a really neat way of using his super smart engineer type brain <laughs> to get these things out i would just get really frustrated and give up so i'm so thankful that he helps me and if you're new to my channel my husband and i have been doing this for many years i think we've been on youtube for like four or five years now but recently he started going to school full time. He's going to school for his um, computer science degree. He wants to get a bachelor's in computer science. So he's helping me out more with our business on YouTube while he's doing school, although his school does take up most of the day. So it is kind of the same as if he were working full time. <laughs> I think that we really underestimated how much time you spend when you're in class and having to study and doing all the reading, it really is like having a full-time job. So if there's anybody watching who is currently doing full-time school and working or has done that in the past, we really want to applaud you on your hard work, com completing all of that work and having a job because man, that is so hard. But now that all of those things are out, I have to fill in the holes from where all those things were, as well as the hinges. There's holes from the screws from the hinges and things like that. So I'm using some Bondo. This is my second time using Bondo ever, and I'm getting used to it really quickly. So I know that if you've never used it before either, that you can get used to it really quickly too. You wanna to work in small batches, and the reason for that is because the hardener that's in it hardens pretty quickly. I would say within less than 10 minutes, it starts getting hard and a little too thick to spread. So you got to work kind of quick with this Bondo, but it dries really fast, which makes projects go really quickly. And it's also stronger than most wood fillers and it doesn't shrink like a lot of wood fillers do. So once you put it over some holes, it's not going to shrink inside there and show that dip where the hole was again. Now I'm taking off these non-original handles 
and I'm going to use some Bondo to cover that, um, those few holes that are here as well. This piece was really dirty and when something is this dirty I like to go in with my drill and some brushes to get all of the gross stuff off of there that is like dried or not sticky. Just anything that's on there that would take forever to wipe up or make you have to use a bunch of different rags in order to wipe it all up. I get it off with the brush first so that way when I do go to clean it it's much easier to clean and there's a lot less debris so that gets rid of all the cobwebs all the dirt and dust and just random crumbs of things that get all in there <laughs> and then I can go in and sand back all of that bondo that I put in and it gets nice and smooth and flat it's like it never happened none of those screw holes were ever even there and then I'm going to be using a type of paint that does not require me to sand this entire piece down so if you're wondering while you're watching why I'm not sanding the entire thing prepping it for paint it's because I'm going to be painting with enamel paint and that stuff is amazing it sticks really well so it's not necessary to prime unless you have a super slick surface then I definitely would do some sanding and priming and all that but <laughs> once I get all of this stuff sanded I have to give it a deep clean and another thing you want to think about when you're sanding even if you're not painting the sides of the drawers Go ahead and give them a good sand because it makes them look new again and they'll slide a lot better. After I'm done sanding, I do all my shop backing. Now that I've used the brush, I've sanded, I've done all those things, I've created a lot of dust and I'm going to vacuum up all the dust that I can. You can use a blower too, like a leaf blower or something like that. But I like using the vacuum because it gets out everything that's all in the cracks <laughs> that maybe a blower wouldn't be able to reach. And then I hand sand the spots that my sander couldn't get to that I noticed needed to be sanded before I finished doing all my vacuuming. But then I go back, get all that sawdust up, all that dust of whatever gross stuff was in there before. And then that way when I go to clean it, there's still not a lot of debris. It's a much faster way to clean and really, really efficient. Plus, if you get grossed out by all this stuff, it really helps if you vacuum it before you clean it because it, it, it starts to look really disgusting <laughs> when you're cleaning with something wet when you have this much dust and dirt and cobwebs and I don't even know what else I don't want to know what else because like you know what dust is made of I mean who knows <laughs> where this piece has been or what it has seen but I cleaned it all up off camera I hate filming cleaning just because it takes forever it's so boring and I hate cleaning but it's nice and clean now and I use disinfectant cleaner on pieces that I think are really dirty and gross so I literally disinfected this with microban when I cleaned it <laughs> Now I'm going to use some Bondo on the front of these drawers because I completely forgot to do that. But my Bondo has already dried on my spatula. So I'm going to show you a trick that you can do to get the Bondo off your spatula, which is just to sand it right off of your spatula. I just sanded it smooth, not necessarily back to the metal, because it's going to keep getting Bondo on it over and over. So <laughs> as long as it's smooth and usable, that's really all that matters. But it's time to get Bondo into these larger holes. In order to be really time efficient, I'm going to let that dry while I paint it. I'm painting it in laurel green. This paint was on clearance at Lowe's. I think I paid about $4 per can for this. It might have been less actually. I can't remember because I bought a bunch of different paints. But I bought all the ones on clearance. Uh, something to remember though is that a lot of times when paint's going on clearance, it's because they're not going to make it anymore. So buy all of it or make sure you have the exact right amount for whatever project you're doing because then you won't be able to get it again if you run out before you finish. So I bought all of the cans that I could reach. So I think I had bought maybe five or six of these cans, which is more than enough. Usually a bookcase like this or a hutch like this is four to five cans of enamel paint, just if you're wondering. I know a lot of people have asked that in my past videos. So I would say five cans to be safe, especially if it's a little bit larger than this. And having the sixth can can help you later on if you accidentally hurt this piece in some way and need to touch it up. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen with moving or kids or you never know but 
That way you have an extra one if you're planning on keeping the piece that you redo if you're following my instructions for this makeover. But I did two coats on all of the surfaces. I actually usually start my pieces upside down, but I couldn't do that at this time just for time purposes. I didn't have help to lift this up at the moment. My husband was watching the kids for me. And so I had to just do what I could in the time that I have. We have four kids and I run my YouTube business and we also have a booth in a store and we are starting an online Etsy store as well. So our time is very limited. <laughs> now my husband came out and helped me lift this up. I had already done two coats on the sides. So that was done, but now I had to do the base of it and finish doing the rest of the two coats on the entire rest of the piece. You can see <laughs> my face. I am not enjoying all the spray paint getting into my eyes and so I recently just bought a new respirator that covers your eyes and everything like it's a full face gas mask so I'm going to be using that going forward and wearing my hazmat suit because after I painted this even with a respirator on I was feeling sick for a few days afterwards like really sick not feeling good at all as if I had a really bad cold or something like that. Also, I'm holding my chest so that I don't bump into the <laughs> paint right there. And I thought that was funny. You'd probably laugh. But now that this is dried, I'm going to sand it nice and flat and then get this painted just like the rest of the piece as well. But I am going to tape off the sides to make sure I don't get any overspray on that nice drawer that I just sanded and cleaned. want to be free of this heart. Yeah. want to feel your arms around me. Need you more, need you here, more than I would like to admit. Let's forget about tomorrow. Yeah, should I hide away forever? Should I close my eyes and never again hold you tight, call you mine, think about you every time? I remember that it's over. Yeah. You never break, you never lie You never ever scared of the dark So why am I the one who cries? I'm so afraid to be left behind I think about you a lot Some This piece is really coming together It is the next day and I am almost completely done with it You can see my full face mask now that I was talking about earlier I was wearing that because I was painting something else and when I'm sanding again I just really want to cover everything up so that way I don't get that sickness feeling from breathing in anything toxic. I do love this enamel paint but I will be honest with you that is one of the major drawbacks of using it is if you have any paint sensitivity this stuff is really strong so you need to make sure you're using your proper PPE. And I'm going to do a light distressing on the entire piece. This piece is not perfect. None of my pieces I do are perfect, first of all. But this one has, you know, some, some character, some age, a story that it's telling. So I'm going to do some light sanding and distressing on the entire thing just to help bring out the details in it. But also show that this is an older piece and it's supposed to look like it is an older piece and not a brand new thing that is trying to look perfect. But... It's beautiful with that light distressing, and I think that that was definitely the right choice to do. I got these handles from a yard sale. I think I paid like 75 cents for the pair. That was a major score. I haven't seen any yard sales lately, which is such a bummer because the weather is so perfect for it. And yes, I did measure with my hand <laughs> to make sure it was the same on both sides. I'm an eyeballer, and if you're new... You probably don't know that about me, but I hate measuring and doing things perfectly because it's just not who I am. It's not in my DNA. My husband is the one who loves doing all that stuff. So when I need something perfectly done, he does it for me and helps me out. But look at how great this looks. Not bad for having eyeballed it. Here it is inside my booth. The lighting is a little iffy in my booth. I really need to figure out a way to get rid of those shadows on the bottom of my pieces and maybe like some under lighting. I don't know. I really have to figure that out. I'm not a professional person of whoever does lighting. I don't know what you'd even call that. <laughs> but I do need to figure out something to get rid of the shadows inside my bookshelves and my, my hutch shelves like this. But this is just a good idea of what I have, how I have currently styled it. I do want to go back and style it a little bit differently, but I had just sold my last hutch here, which was my French Provincial one. You probably saw that in one of my last videos. 
but it just sold and I had to hurry up and get this new hutch in there as soon as I could, as soon as it was cured enough to go in there. And so I just quickly put what I could in there to get my items displayed to sell. And let me be honest with you. The way that I staged this, I think I really don't like how it looks. Also, I don't think anybody else likes how it looks because nothing has sold from my booth in two days and it's a weekend. So that is showing you that people are not buying because that's the time that people do shop in our store the most. So I really need to go back to the drawing board and figure out how I can arrange my booth a little bit differently. But this is the next piece that we're going to work on. So this I got for free off of Facebook Marketplace. Somebody was getting rid of it. I didn't see anybody else show any interest in picking it up. There was one other person who said they might be interested, but then they never went and got it. And so when that happens, I'm like, okay, well, it seems like nobody needs it. So maybe I can take it if they're going to end up throwing it out. And this one I ended up keeping because I wanted to use it in my booth to display my stuff because I thought this thing has a lot of character and it could look really cool displaying my stuff. It has a shelf in here and it's a really good size, but that top needs to go. It was actually underneath a bigger plywood top, a circular plywood top, and they were using it as like a game table, maybe for like poker or something, but it was as big as a large dining table. So that piece I already took off. I'm not showing that in the video here, but this was the under piece that was just holding up that heavy plywood top. And this thing was falling apart. I had intended to flip it over and then cut it to be square like the table, but there's no way that this is going to survive being cut like that. I think I'm actually just going to scrap it all together because it was in really rough shape. It was like kind of dry rotted or something, but I did have this. The day that being a hoarder might have paid off. I say all these jokes all the time saying that hoarders keep that one like random scrap wood and then like 20 years from now they pull it out and say see I told you there was a reason to keep it <laughs> this comes from a different table oh please fit oh it's perfect <laughs> it even matches the wood color oh my gosh I don't even have to refinish it you gotta be joking man and then that would be cool to be able to open it, babe. Look, we can actually open it and get to the stuff in there. <gasps> it just keeps getting better. But how do we keep it on there, though? That's the question. Here's another good example of when I would use those electric brushes and I'll link them in my Amazon store. I have some already in my Amazon store for you if you want to try them. These things I use for pretty much every single furniture flip that I do. And if you're somebody who likes to redo furniture often, even if it's just for yourself, I think it's definitely worth it to get these. They're not expensive at all. And I, I've used them so many times that it's actually wearing out and I'm about ready to need some more. But I want to add on some wheels to this piece just because I think it'll help bring the height up a little bit. It'll look really cool. And also it makes it easier for me to move it around in my booth if I want to change things around in there. Eventually I want this piece to be right in the middle of my booth, like right center in my booth. And have different things stacked on top of it at different heights because I think that would look really cute. But the way that I'm putting these wheels in is I'm just pre-drilling a hole that is the size of that little metal piece that comes with the wheel. And then I'm going to put some glue on that metal piece and just slide the wheel in there um, with that metal piece in there to hold it. I, don't, I really don't know what that's called. I'm sorry, this doesn't sound very scientific. <laughs> but I got these wheels off Amazon and I'll link them in my Amazon store as well. They're pretty affordable and I'm going to use them on some chairs in my house too. But see, I'm just dipping this piece, whatever this is into the hole that I drilled so that it stays nice and strong in there. And then I just slide the wheel into that piece. For the top, I'm going to attach it by using some small L brackets. I ran to the store and grabbed some L brackets, but first I need to trace where they're going to go because I want to drill them onto the top piece first and then onto the actual table second. You'll see what I mean here. I know it's nothing new, but it's so good to see you. Do the 
this every day And I'm still so amazed by you So hold me tight through the night mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just us two applied some glue just to make it even stronger because you know this thing is very old and I want to make sure it's going to work and last for a while in my booth at least and I just slid it in and it went right back to where it was supposed to be based on the lines that I had traced and I'm screwing it into the actual furniture now. Here she is in my booth. I put a not for sale sticker on there just because this is not for sale, not right now and probably not for a very long time if I ever sell it. But I have some things staged on here. I think they look pretty good for now, but I really do need to go back and do something differently with the layout of my booth and maybe put in an even bigger hutch in there. I also redid this hutch here on the left. I didn't film any of it though, but it was fake wood and like pressed board with fake laminate something over it and I spray painted it with a glossy black enamel and then put some black hardware on there that I got from Hobby Lobby and I think that looks really good but now we're going to move on to the third trash to treasure this thing came with us all the way from Arizona before we moved to Houston uh, almost two years now ago but this was made out of some reclaimed beadboard that we got from a built-in. If you've been watching my channel for a very long time, you've seen this built-in. We built it into our laundry room, actually. But we got a built-in that I'm guessing came from some historic town in Arizona, maybe like Tombstone or something like that, because it was very old. And it had been made of beadboard, but it was too big for the space that we were putting it in in our laundry room. So we took it apart, pulled beadboard out of it to make it skinnier to fit where we had to put it, and we had all this leftover historic, super thick, like one inch thick beadboard. So we kept it for a very long time and had made this board, like took a piece of plywood and then glued this beadboard on top of it. And I was just going to use it like as wall decor and put a wreath in it or something like that. But when we got into the house we're in now, in our Eden kitchen, there was a an intercom system that was on the wall in right in the middle of the wall in our Eden kitchen and it doesn't work if it worked I wouldn't have covered it up but since it doesn't work and I don't want to have to remove all that there's no power going to it or anything like that but since I didn't want to have to fill in the drywall or whatever I needed to do to fix that and get rid of it I just decided that this would be perfect to install on the wall and hold some really pretty china that my grandmother had that um, when she passed away I decided I wanted to keep for us to help keep the memory of her awesome house that she had and all her cool shabby chic decor that she did. She's really the person who started me on flipping furniture. She used to do all her home renovations. She literally has a book showing all the before and afters with every single receipt of every DIY she did to her house that she had bought and paid off on her own. She was a single mother with seven kids and she made it so far in life as to buy her own townhouse and pay it off completely and DIY'd 
everything in there. It was all original from the 70s. Everything was dark brown and yucky. And she did a full on like, <laughs> I don't know, like a scrapbook inside a notebook with every receipt of all the things that she did in there. And I still have it. And I think that is the coolest thing ever. But that is where my love of decorating came from. Her and I used to watch Trading Spaces back way back in the day, <laughs> back uh, when Trading Spaces was really, really popular. And we would um, talk about all the different things that we would have done. And that's also back when decorating your house didn't have to be expensive when you could spend $20 on a gallon of paint and repaint a room. <laughs> wow, it's crazy to think to me that that wasn't really that long ago. I guess maybe it was like 20 years ago, but it, it wasn't that long ago to be able to now not afford to do any of that stuff. And those prices are like unbelievably cheap compared to what they are now. So it's just, it's so fun to look back and think of how it all started and where my love of decorating came from and just how different decorating has become compared to before. Like before, nobody really had these Instagram worthy houses because there was no Instagram. It was just you visiting your friends and family. There was no showing the whole world what you had inside your home. It was just meant for your family and what you loved. And I think that remembering it, especially just thinking right now about it, man, we really need to get back to that mentality that things don't have to be perfect and you don't have to compare your stuff to everybody else at all times. You can spend 20 bucks on something and make your house feel better for you. And how cool would it be if you <laughs> traded houses with your neighbor and did each other's living rooms for a day? Like, I would love to do that. That would be the best day ever for me. Even if it was super tiring, I would have so much fun redecorating a room for my neighbor. Obviously, I literally do this for a living, <laughs> but I love it. I love my job and my husband and I love what we do. But now I need to paint this thing white. I want it to be white and bright in the kitchen because our house gets like no natural light on the bottom floor. But another thing I needed to do that I noticed after I painted it was I really needed to fill in all the cracks that were on there. But the stain was coming through. The wood was bleeding through the, the white. So I couldn't spray shellac on there since it was already installed on the wall in our house. So I'm just going to use some shellac with a foam brush and paint it up to get rid of that staining that's coming through and then do a final coat. Flying low under the radar Like a night hawk stealth plane the fastest and easiest way I can think of to fill in all the cracks and imperfections that are like major imperfections on here is to just use some caulking and if you've never used one uh, one of these before all you do is you cut the tip off and pull that thing back stick it in there and squeeze and it'll come out it's that easy and I think this is one of the easiest things you can do to fix something up or even in your house like if you're going to spend a day doing some deep cleaning in your house, go to the store and spend like four or five bucks on a tube of caulking and do your baseboards or do around a door frame or a window frame or in your bathroom. And you'll be really amazed at how fresh and clean it looks after you're done. And you'll be thinking, why did I not do that sooner? It takes you like five to 10 minutes and none of it is hard at all. It's one of the easiest projects that you can do. It's actually kind of fun in a way. <laughs> But you'll be shocked at how amazingly fresh all of your room looks after you've fixed up the caulking around your room, especially a bathroom. Putting in some fresh caulking around in a bathroom makes it look fresh and clean and new again, like you're just moving in. Hiding out in the shadows, keeping from the light of day. should ever have to live that way Hey now It's okay now You don't have to hide from the world no more Hey now It's okay now It's your time to soar 
I thrifted this beautiful plate, I guess, just a serving plate, tray, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. And it is, I think it says Henry Alcock, but it's from England. It's very old and super beautiful. I'll have to see, like look it up on Google or something, what, what era this is from. But I would guess probably early 1900s. I'm going to hang up this plate as well as many other plates using these plate hangers I got off Amazon. I'll link that in my Amazon store below. It has these little rubber things that you can put on there to help not damage the plate. I don't have any super valuable, like, perfect condition china, so I'm not too concerned about these doing any damage to my plates. But, so that's why I'm okay with using them on the stuff I have, because everything I have already has, like, little imperfections on it. That's totally all right. But I hung them all up on here using just a nail into my beadboard, if you were wondering. You could potentially use command hooks here but I would not put it anywhere where if something fell it could really hurt somebody because I've had command hooks fail when they were holding something in a lighter weight than their like maximum capacity so just be mindful of that I would prefer that you use an actual nail in the wall but look at how great this turned out there's my my grandmother's plate right there that pink one the other ones I thrifted and that green rimmed one there is also my grandmother's and then the top two outside plates are my grandmother's as well and I actually thrifted the my thrifted ones from here in Texas Texas has great antiques y'all <laughs> I love it if you made it to the end of this video I want to personally thank you for watching and supporting our channel it really makes a difference for our family we have new videos out every Wednesday and Sunday see you next time bye